Welcome to this presentation on the next step towards facilities management for manufacturing plants. In this session, we'll be focusing on the most important aspect for owners, and that is assets. As we've now gone through the stages of delivering and coordinating data, it is now time to actually start building our facility and make sure we've got all the relevant assets tagged so we can follow up during installation. This is done with the Autodesk Construction Cloud build module, which allows us to have a direct communication line between the field and project management. This means we're going to get data generated in the field to which the project team can then react and update the status of the project. In order to get a clear view as to what is happening, we're also going to input our data into Navisworks straight out of the Autodesk Construction Cloud to get visual feedback as to what is happening in the field to our assets. Before we dive into the asset story, let's have a look at some of the information we can tie to them. One of the aspects is to import a Microsoft project planning and thus having all of these tasks potentially linked to our uh, different assets, as you can see here. Second of all, notice that the forklift comes before the walk and drive driveway tasks. This is going to be important later on in the story. Other aspect is that we can tie our cost aspects to uh, the different tasks, which means that we can go for uh, an understanding of how our cash flow is going. Next up, if we now look into our assets, then you'll notice that we have a couple of definitions in here, such as the installation status. Uh, we've also pulled the design ID and we're going to fill in the installed by field. But also there's a bi-directional link between the assets and the object that we've pulled the information from. So yes, indeed, we can pull information from our 3D models and turn them into assets. So let's have a look at one of the specific assets that we have here. And what you're noticing here is that we can type pretty much anything to an asset, such as a checklist, a data sheet, the location, and a picture as to where we've taken this, uh, where, where we are managing and installing this uh, asset. So as I mentioned, what we can also do is get that information right inside of Navisworks. And to do so, what we're doing is we're exporting our assets and the data they contain into a database, which we link in Navisworks, which now means that we can look at the information that comes directly from the Autodesk Construction Cloud, such as the status which is delivered, the hyperlink into the object, etc. So what that means is that we can now start leveraging Navisworks selection sets to actually look at all the uh, objects that are defined as assets. And just to get a clear understanding, what we're going to do is we're going to invert that selection and we're going to set transparency to all of the other objects. Now, because we also have appearance profiler, it means that we can, based upon our asset status, we can color code our elements, thus providing a 3D visual as to what the status is of all those uh, assets in 3D. And we can push this into desktop connector. And that means that we have a visual right inside of Autodesk Construction Cloud, which has all of that information. Second aspect is, as you've recalled, we've got Microsoft Project inside of the Autodesk Construction Cloud, which actually is sitting directly again into the desktop connector. And that means through a bit of configuration, we can actually build our task hierarchy, which you see here, and we can then define uh, what type of construction it is that we're doing, construction or demolition or temporary statuses. Uh, we've defined a specific one for the last one, which is a truck visualization, which you're going to see at the end during the visualization. Now, actually, what you're going to see is that we've uh, defined all those tasks. We've also got selection set sets which correspond effectively to the very same tasks that we have. And that allows us to leverage a very powerful truck, uh, powerful uh, technique inside of Navisworks, which is an auto rule to map the uh, selection sets to the tasks with the same name. And that means that we now have indeed a simulation which shows us visually what's happening inside of Microsoft Project. I've split the view into two, one external, one uh, inside 
of the facility so that you can clearly see what is going on. And again, as you'll notice, that forklift that I mentioned is installed before uh, the driveway's uh, signage. And so that's effectively something that we're gonna be modifying in a second. So as you can see, first the forklift, and then we're gonna have the signage on the floor, which is the walk-in driveway's uh, task, if you will. Okay, now that we have that, let's uh, indeed go into the field app. And the field app is basically a tool that uh, synchronizes with the cloud, so you don't need a live connection with the internet, but all of the data that we have set up, that we have defined in our project, we can leverage this right inside of uh, our field app. And so indeed, what we can do is, for instance, scan a barcode, which is also part of, this, of the parameters that we can tie to an asset. And as you can see here, we've got the data sheet. We've got all of that information. And thus, we can now change the status to, for instance, installed once we have our object delivered and we've uh, hooked it up uh, to, the, um, to the facility. We also have that 3D view that we can have, etc. Now notice this forklift, as I mentioned, let's suppose that this is not being delivered on time. So what we can do here is we can suggest to the planner that this task will be delayed. And so we're pushing this out by eight days as a suggestion. So we're gonna start not on the 6th of July, but on the 14th, and we're gonna finish on the 18th. And so now that that has happened, all we need to do is synchronize our factory or the factory project back into the cloud, which means that we can now from the uh, build environment in the cloud with the planner view as to what is happening. So indeed, in this case, I'm taking on the role of the master planner. I'm seeing and I'm noticing that there is a modification that's being suggested. I can now start filtering with all the tools available inside of Autodesk Construction Cloud for critical path, for anything that is relevant to cost, etc., to see whether that forklift is indeed a problem, yes or no. And if we find out that we can just uh, allow this, what we can do then is make this a resolved uh, task change. The last thing we need to do, obviously, is go back into Microsoft Project, use the Microsoft Project um, file that sits within the Autodesk Construction Cloud, change that task, and all we need to do now is update that schedule, which is indeed going to show us that now the forklift is indeed at the end. Uh, the beauty is also that we can compare the different uh, files that we have, the different versions, I should say, of the planning. And indeed, what you're going to see is that the forklift, if we compare version three, in this case, to version two, then the forklift has changed. And indeed, the forklift is now as a task later than the walk-in driveways. And so guess what? We've done two things, right? We've updated the status of uh, that uh, robot controller to installed. So that means automatically through the database uh, link, it's going to update we can push this into the cloud. And actually, even inside of Navisworks, we can compare two versions, version one and version two, and have an understanding of what is happening here. So just uh, moving forward on those selection sets, notice that I now have, for instance, version one, which is delivered. If I move to version two and the changes, it's gonna tell me that it's installed. And guess what, when it comes to the planning, this is still the original one, the forklift is uh, installed before the signage. All we need to do now is refresh the whole thing, which effectively means that now the task comes later. And when we do now do this uh, visualization, you're gonna notice that at the end, the signage is indeed gonna be first, and then the forklift is being installed, as you can see here. And then lastly, of course, we have a direct link with the database which sits behind it, which we call the data connector. And all we need to do now is leverage Power BI. We can filter out for certain uh, elements, etc., and we get a clear understanding as to what is happening to our assets, for instance. There are more Power BI reports available, but this is one I'm focusing on now. 